What's up amigos? Today we're looking at the PowerView tutorial on how to do streamlines. So if you don't know how to get to this stage, we have the tutorial playlist where you can look at how to import a file and then you can get these um, files here. You can import your own files and then you can do streamlines on them. So once you've imported them, if you don't know how to do that, check the video out. If you have do know how to do that, get to this point and we can go from here. So streamlines are really important. They show you what's going on in the flow, but how do you get them? So in this toolbar here, you have a bunch of different buttons. And this one here, which has a little circle with these wavy lines over it, that's the streamline button. And to use streamlines, it's very important. First of all, I need to emphasize that the file that you have clicked is very important because that's the file that the streamlines are going to be imported into. And I'll show you what happens if you don't click the right file in a minute. But to know which file you need to click out of the mango or this one. So just so you know, this one here, which is visible, this is the actual mango. If I toggle off, you won't see anything. This one here is the mesh, the internal mesh. Again, if you don't know what these are, check out the playlist on how to import a file and then you'll understand what these are. So I'm going to toggle this off so it's invisible, but it's important to click this one. That's because we're now highlighting the, the internal mesh for the streamlines to be um, developed through. So after I've clicked this, I click the streamline button and we now get this line popping up into the screen. And we also get a new toolbar on the side. So the toolbar is quite useful in that if you want to change where the line is going, you can either put in coordinates. So I can, if I don't want it to go from, um, this is the x uh, direction in this, in this way. If I want it to go from zero, I just put in zero, and now the line has moved. Or if I don't want to put in the coordinates, I can just drag around this line myself, whichever one is easier for you. So if I want to drag the line, let's say, I can just move it around into whichever position I want to. So this is now approximately in the x, y, in the x, z plane, sorry. And it looks fairly aligned with how I want it to be. But I want to make sure that it's aligned in the other planes as well. So I'm rotating this by clicking the left mouse button and pulling around. Or I can use these buttons up here. So if I want to look at from the side, I can click the plus Y and that's now from the side. If I want to click look from the front, I can click the plus X and now that's from the X. So you can see from the plus Y direction, it looks fairly aligned. It could be better. Let's say we go down like this. But from the plus x direction, now it's very out of line. So I need to now move these around to get it aligned properly, which is why it's important to change the plane views to align it properly. That's interesting. Okay, so that looks quite good. What will happen now is this line is where the streamlines will come from. And you can change this if you want to. So it doesn't have to be a, a line. It can be... So it can be a, um, instead of a line, it can be a point. So I can change this to a point and now all the streamlines will come from this point here, this whole sphere. But I'm just gonna stick to the line for now and I'll show you the point in a second. Now, another important feature is the number of, of points that will come out of the this line. So if you want to have 1000 streamlines, then we can have resolution of 1000. If we want to have only 100, then we will have 100 lines coming out of this point. The more, the more uh, points you have, so the higher the resolution, the longer it will take for your computer to compute this and then display the streamlines. I'm going to stick to 100 for now because that's enough to show you how it looks like. And another interesting thing is this integration direction. So if you have both, it means that the streamlines from this line will go back and forward. So upstream and downstream. I'll show you what that looks like now. So I'll click apply and you'll see the streamlines pop up once this bar has uh, loaded. So now you can see all these streamlines that have popped up and I'm rotating around. From this line, the streamlines are going back and forward. I only want to see what they are forward because I'm not interested in what's going upstream. Upstream is nothing. So it's just the free stream direction. So I change this to forward. I'm clicking apply. That will now update these lines. So the streamline is rolling up quite nicely around the mango. 
and say I want to get rid of the, the line, show, so I don't want to see the line. I just toggle this button, show line off, and now it makes it disappear. So it looks a bit nicer. And another interesting thing to note is how long these lines are. So you can see they are quite long. If I want to cut them shorter, I come to this maximum streamline value here, and it's currently at 0 0.73. I want to change this to, let's say, 0 0.5. Press Enter and click Apply. And it will reload these streamlines, make them a little bit shorter. Let's go 0 0.3 instead. Click Apply. Okay, so they're very short now, but it's quite nice. Now, another thing to talk about is what are these streamlines showing? They're colored, obviously. You can see if I hide the mango, let, let's do that. So I just toggle the mango visibility off there. And you can see the, the lines are colored. What are they colored in? They're colored with this pressure here. Now, if I want to change what these are colored in, I can come down to the coloring. So I've, I've made sure to highlight the streamline tracer. If I highlight the mango, let's say I highlight that and I change the coloring, that will change the coloring of this mango, not the streamlines. So make sure you click the streamlines and you come to the coloring and you click whatever you want. I'm going to say U, which is the U magnitude. And you can change it to the X, Y, or Z velocity, um, directions. I'm going to keep just the magnitude in general. And now we have the different bar coming up. So these streamlines are colored from 0 0.27 meters per second to 31 meters per second. I can change the range that this is going in with this button here, rescale to custom range under the coloring map. So it's these arrows with this little C next to it. I click that and now I have the range and I can change this from the lower, lower value from zero to the upper value of let's say 30. Just a bit nicer now. And let's say I wanna change the color map because these are the same color maps and it gets confusing. So I can come here to this folder with the heart on there. This is changing the color map. It says choose preset if you hover over it. I click that and now I have all these different color maps to click from, to, to choose from. You can also add your own if, and if you want to with the import. I won't go into that today, but let's say I want to go to the jet and I click apply and I close it. Now this has gone to a different color map and now you have different colors on these streamlines and they look quite nice. You can dif differentiate between the mango and the streamlines now. That's quite nice. So the final thing I want to talk about is the changing it to the point source. So remember how I said that you can have a, a line or a point source. I'm going to just go to a point source now. And you can see this is a massive uh, sphere. I'm just going to click apply, apply now to show you what it looks like if I were to just leave it as it is. And so what you can see first of all is it's not aligned with the mango. Secondly, these um, streamlines are coming from this entire sphere. It's, it's quite a big area. So first thing is I want to change the size of the sphere. So to do that, I come down to sphere parameters. I change the radius. So currently it's 0 0.073. I want to change it to 0 0.02, let's say. Much smaller now. If I click apply now, this, the streamlines will be much more concentrated. And you can see here, that's actually quite cool. It's going near the mango, but not on the mango, but still the effects of the mango as seen with these streamlines um, bulging out a little bit. But let's not go into that. Um, I'm here to show you how to use PowerView, not talk about aerodynamics. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. So let's move this sphere into the direction of the mango, align it with the mango. So I'm gonna click the plus X to go to the front. Now I'm just going to move this sphere. I can also change the location with these values here, the center values, but it's just easy to move it around manually. So that looks fairly aligned. I'm gonna click apply now. And now all these streamlines are hitting the mango and they're going around and it looks quite nice. And again, if I don't wanna see the sphere, like the line, I can just toggle this button off and now the sphere has disappeared and I'm just getting the streamlines and the mango. If you want to get better at CFD, including PowerView with the post analysis, check out our CFD courses, link in the description. And make sure to like, subscribe, and check out the instrumentation we do at Prenox. We have the Atmosphere Hawk, we have experimental instrumentation to make your CFD easier to validate. And check out the course we put on every year. Links in the description. Peace out.